Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at the NAMM show in Anaheim, California, and I'm with Tom from Universal Audio. Hey, hey Sam. Tom. How's How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. So we're standing in front of a computer displaying what I think is so far by far the biggest product launch at the NAMM show. This is UA's Luna. Now, there's been quite a lot of speculation about what Luna actually is. Yeah. And all the UA spokespeople I've talked to so far have been quite careful to avoid using the term digital audio workstation. It's a five dollar fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Internal <laughs> politics clearly come into play here. But also, I mean, this clearly is a software recording and mixing package, but you, you're clearly at pains to differentiate it from whatever's out there already. I mean, in what sense is this and isn't this a DAW? Well, the thing the way we're going to describe this and are, and are describing it is, and for the people watching, hopefully you're familiar with the Apollo range of Thunderbolt audio interfaces we manufacture. So the Twin, the X4, the Apollo X racks, for example. So these units have DSP on board, our UAD2 Shark DSP, which is uh, there so you can run things like Unis and preamp emulations and all of our um, plugin emulations we have, a library of over 150 plugins that you can run on the interfaces. That's previously been the offering with the UA you know, recording workflow is low latency, real-time processing and tracking, but into, as you say, DAWs that are third party. Whereas with the Lunar recording system, what we're doing is transforming your Apollo into an integrated, very deeply integrated, really inspiring and analog sounding recording environment. So it's, it's the integration or the symbiotic kind of relationship between the Apollo itself and the, the recording platform, which is Lunar, the Lunar application that takes it beyond the, the DAW term, you know, in, in our eyes. So whereas before you had the console utility, which was kind of like modeled on a large format console, you've now added, in a sense, the other major component of a recording environment, which is the tape machine. Exactly. Well, it, yeah, tape machine, nonlinear recording and editing, everything you'd expect for like modern workflows. There's MIDI in, in, inside Luna, so you can do all of your programming. You know, it's a, it's a full production environment, but it's designed to be really quick, simple to use, single window workflow. Um, the Apollo console itself is still a, and will still be a developed product. So if you're using Apollo, you know, we expect people to be using different workstations. We see people using, you know, things for loop based creation and editing or mastering there'd be different applications where you may flip between things you know so and that's quite popular these days so obviously you can still use Apollo console and use that in, in the front end with your Apollo but if you move into the lunar recording system you then move into the lunar application where console is effectively no longer required because all the features of console are built within to the fabric of, of lunar so I gather one of the key sort of design goals here is and um, you've looked at current workflows and you've seen that the big pain point is latency and the Absolutely. whole idea behind this is to remove latency and buffer size as an issue for setup. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we talked about this yesterday, but, you know, when we both started recording and you move into, you know, computer based recording platforms, you have that whole, uh, oh, I need to learn about buffer size and, you know, uh, th round trip latencies for performing VIs or recording mo tracks in monitor, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And the beautiful thing with with the Lunar system is because you have an Apollo integrated into that and the DSP on board we're able to move things between the DSP and the native CPU in Luna running on your Mac for example to give you the best of both worlds so you have the low latency workflow with DSP for tracking cue mixing all the things you need to get you know sort of really good feel in the studio but then you you've got the ability now to un unleash the power of your Mac in the back end for more processing you know. So from the user's point of view, it's, you no longer need to do that thing of like, oh, I'm tracking, I need to set it to 32 samples. Oh, I'm mixing, I'll just raise it to that's, 100. That's gone, yeah. So you now, when you put tracks into accelerated real-time monitoring or ARM mode in Luna, you're able to move things to and from our DSPs within the interfaces. So you can do that with like an AUX, for example. So you could put a reverb in. So even if you're at the end of a, let's say, a 100-track mix, and then you go, oh, we need to overdub one more vocal. It's really simple to just load that into the DSP and track without having to worry about adjusting buffer size. There is no internal buffer size adjustment in the V1 launch of, of Luna. So. And the other big development, I guess, as far as the history of UAD is concerned, is um, historically UAD has given us all these amazing processing plugins. 
but it's never really supported virtual instruments. And now in Luna, we've got virtual instruments. Yeah, I mean, we've been requested, I think since as long as I've been using UA, 2000 maybe, people have said, oh, instruments. And now we've done them in a way that I think fits a much larger ecosystem. So, I mean, if we take a look at the Luna application, there are four really key po po parts to this. You have your Apollo Thunderbolt interface, the Luna application that's on screen behind me. We have a thing called Luna Extensions, which gives you the analog feel and sound, so tape and built-in Neve console. But then we've also launched at the show, which is huge for us, the Lunar Instruments, which the big thing here is they run only with inside the Lunar environment. So they won't run in a third party you know, workstation. They are built to run inside the fabric of our world, you know. But these are also, in a sense, the first UA native plugins because they actually run on the host machine rather than on the UAD cards. Yeah, so like I say, Luna is leveraging the sort of power of your the Mac, but also you still relying on our DSP for the low latency stuff. So inside Luna, the, the tape extensions and the Neve console extensions and all the instruments. So we've launched at the show a official mini Moog, uh, which I'll show you in a second, the Ravel Grand Piano. Uh, which is a version of a Steinway piano recorded at Ocean Way, and then an instrument called Shape. They're all running and, and obviously leveraging things like disk streaming and sample loading to and from the Mac. So it's a, a very powerful system. And tell us a bit about the Neve summing and the tape emulation aspects of Luna. Well, should we dive into the software behind us and have a look Absolutely. at Luna? Okay. Single window workflow in Luna. So as you'd expect to see, you have all of your tracks. You can do MIDI straight in here. So. Um, if we select a MIDI region, for example, you can press E and you have uh, MIDI editing right in the one window. So you have a piano roll, you can obviously edit MIDI notes, uh, change velocities and CC data and all that kind of thing right here. And then just go back to working on your regions. Um, if we select audio regions, you have things like individual gain control per per region or clip. And then you also have uh, pitch control, which is pretty groundbreaking because you can put things up an octave or use it for tuning or if you wish uh, quickly try out vocal harmony ideas by doing a say like a third up or a fifth down or something whatever you want to try you know you can just slice your regions and go or slice your clips so that's um, you know that window we have some view functionality so over here you can see uh, tracks on the, the left hand side so you could for example hide tracks you don't want to edit or worry about right now you can show and hide that section. So it's a completely customizable window workflow. We have a focus channel. So if you like to just mix in one window and, and never really go to the mixer page, you can actually do that here. So you can see your channel that's selected. You can move up and down and get access to your, you know, every section of Luna, whether it's the instrument section or the input stage, tape, built in uh, inserts, sends, cue sends, anything you wish right here. And you can also hide that if you're uh, more sort of focused on the arrangement here and would like to go to the mixer when you want to mix so you can get rid of that there's an info bar at the bottom which shows you your dsp meter for the apollo uh, uad2 dsp but also the render engines running the the host cpu so that's at the bottom there and then people who might be familiar with it will see the apollo monitor section as you would see it in apollo console but that's now integrated into lunar on the right hand side here so you have things like the uh, control room section with talkback insert processing for the talkback mic you have dim control and source switching integrated into luna and also things like the q popover so you can select sources for all the different headphone outputs on the interface so that's all deeply integrated into luna itself and you can choose to show and hide those things per window for example and then go to the mixer and see a different view so then moving to the mixer page we started with looking at uh, the input stages so um, we have things like persistence in the unison slot so the unison slot on the Apollo is integrated into Luna so you have um, the ability to select your physical input from the Apollo and then as soon as you put a track into record mode or effectively arm the track your unison channel is loaded so whatever preamp you'd like to run in the U82 DSP is loaded up run into the front end so here we have the Avalon VT 737 um, you have control over gain phantom power pad polarity reverse and all of the input conditioning functionality that's on the Apollo that's all saved in your Luna session so if you then move to a different track and record enable you could have a different set of parameters and it's just going to have persistence to move between them 
one of my favorite things to do is have like eight tracks for vocal recording and have a different preamp chain for the backing vocals and being able to just move from record arming one to the next and recalling a completely different sound and that's fully saves you know and 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 dynamically moving things to and from your apollo it's such a great feature below the unison slot you have uh, if we move back to this channel strip here, you have record effects and that allows you to load anything from the UAD2 DSP library running in the front end of your Apollo for recording. So you also have a, a plug-in browser so you could easily just type for something and then load whatever you need right here into the front end and that's also there. So that will be recorded to disk an Avalon preamp with its compressor and EQ into the API 550 and then to disk recorded as such and then below that when you move down you're into the playback side of, of Luna if that makes sense so we have the tape slots so coming with Luna is the oxide tape where you have on and off mode individual saturation and that gets you the fat sound and punch of analog tape across all your channels it's very easy for you to have um, oxide loaded across all your drums or all your backing vocals but you have global controls for that machine so you could for example easily a b oxide on and off across all the tracks that have oxide loaded and that oxide is included with luna for free um, if we then also load the studio a800 for example i'll put it on this track here this is a, a luna extension based off our a800 plugin and if you own the uad2 um, studio plugin you'll actually get the luna extension for free but this gives you more expanded controls so you have analog noise repro eq and individual bias controls as you'd expect on a tape machine so you can dial in some personality across all the different tracks and get that really fat two inch sound but you also then have the ability to very quickly change the tape formulation and the tape speed across all the channels that have the a800 loaded and because you can run four tape decks as you'll see here you can have four slots it's very easy to have a tape machine across drums music vocals bvs and have everything you need kind of easily a beable with this beautiful analog sound so that's tape then we have the uh, input stage summing on any bus so if we move back over here you'll see we have the neve summing you can select a bus between nothing which is very clean you know digital mixing and then you can add the neve summing as a cost option which gives you the sound of that um, neve 1272 80 series a mix amp you have a headroom control a trim control individual on off and the uh, two impedance settings which gives you uh, a change in sort of level and, and low frequency saturation uh, as how i hear it so you can have a nice clean very airy neve sound or you can really push into it for fatness have that three-dimensional uh, analog experience and that's all built into the fabric of luna and then below that we have an insert slot where again you can add uh, uad plugins in async mode or you could host audio units here and use your native processing to use your third-party plugins i call that um oh no i call that verb we'll put a reverb on here so let's put plate and just to show you the workflow of creating a send very quickly i could take my drum bus here and send that straight to plate or the sorry the the verb bus i've created you know and you've got pre-fader mute functionality sends are all available on large faders if you wish so you can see them all expanded or, or contracted effectively so that's how easy it is and you have you know this loaded into arm our accelerated real-time monitoring which means this plate is running on one of the auxes in the Apollo up front so it's now a low latency reverb for tracking um, and then you can take it out of arm mode and make it none and now it's a, an offline playback aux running the uh, pure play in asynchronous mode so that's how intelligent it is just shuffling stuff to and from the DSPs on the Apollo so you can choose you know where you put those for example like that so that also gives you like that drum group for example is now also in low latency mode so you're able to um, get the lowest possible latency for tracking your drums through that group starting off we have the shape instrument which comes with uh, Luna so so there you go you can easily bring up content it's all badged content as well so things that we've developed at Universal Audio things from Orange Tree samples or Spitfire they can all be loaded in here so if we went to uh, strings for example we'll have a uh, live chamber ensemble and you'll see that branded by Spitfire Audio so that's nice to see everything there so that's the shape um, 
And then uh, we have the Ravel Grand Piano. I should probably show you some of the more advanced features as well. So as you blend the mics, you go between close and room. It's because it looks so good, we should show that. And then uh, the Mini Moog. Well, it looks very impressive. I mean, this must have been in development for an awfully long time. <laughs> yeah, I think five years with even longer in terms of concept. Wow, and this is going to be completely free to all Apollo owners. Apollo Thunderbolt. So it won't work with uh, Apollo USB, but if you have an arrow or anything up from an arrow into the Apollo X rack range that's running on Thunderbolt or inter you know older interfaces that still use Thunderbolt, you can just download this when it's available in spring 2020 and try it out. As I say, oxide's included, shape instrument is included, and then the rest is you know growing from there into the Lunaverse. <laughs> and it's initially a Mac only launch, but there will be a Windows version, I understand. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That's a question I don't know the answer to, but it's Mac only as, uh, as it stands, yeah. Well, if you ever needed a reason to buy a Mac, maybe this is it. It looks very impressive. So thanks very much, Tom. We can't thanks, wait Sam. to try it out. And um, yeah, good luck. Thank you very much. Cheers.